Hi, my name's Natasha and I work for the Terence Higgins Trust here in Essex. I'm going to do a brief talk today about HIV in preparation for the piece you're going to be performing for the World AIDS Day Arts Festival at the Mercury Theatre. I just wanted to take this moment to say a brief thank you for taking part in the Arts Festival. It's been going on for many years now and it's always been a huge success every year. So I just want to say a big thank you for getting involved and being a part of the festival. Now I know I'm not with you today, but I just wanted to go through a few of the ground rules. Um, when we talk about HIV, a lot of people may have different thoughts and different opinions. Um, so it's very important to respect the different opinions of everyone in your group. Um, it's okay to make mistakes. If you've got a question, please do contact myself or ask your teacher to contact me. Um, I'll try to go through as thoroughly as I can today. Um, but if you do have any questions, you can get hold of me after the talk. Um, and also listen and once again respect what everyone else has to say. I hope you enjoy the talk. I'm um, sorry I couldn't be there today, but I hope this won't be too dull. Um, and please sort of obviously try to keep quiet and put your mobile phones on silent. So to begin with, I'll just talk to you a little bit more about the Terence Higgins Trust. Um, the charity started in 1982 and that was following the death of Terry Higgins. Um, he was the, one of the first people known to have died from AIDS and that was back in July um, 1982. At this time no one knew what HIV was. All they knew was there was an illness that a lot of people seemed to be contracting but nobody knew what was causing this. Um, if you had a diagnosis, unfortunately it was a death sentence. Terry's partner and his friends um, supported Terry while he was very ill and they really wanted to be able to provide some sort of support for other people going through what Terry had gone through himself. So they came together one day after his death in his living room and said well what can we do to help other people in this situation and they came up with these three basic objectives which I'm happy to say are still our objectives today and that's mainly to support people living with HIV here in the UK and to prevent HIV transmission as much as possible so that would be through encouraging safe sex and also to get the correct information out there as well and they also um, lobbied for support for HIV as a cause so especially back in the 80s there was a huge uproar to the government what are you going to do about this terrible illness which is taking so many lives. We are now the largest HIV charity in the UK. We have got offices all over the UK including in Wales and Scotland and we do a wide range of things. We do a lot of health promotion, so that would be talks such as this um, to young people, to adults, to different organisations. Uh, we've also got some clinical services where we would test for HIV but also we test for a lot of other STIs such as chlamydia and gonorrhea and we do what I do myself, um, support people living with HIV in the UK and that's to empower and to enable them to live as normal and as healthy a life as possible. Now I'll just go through some of the definitions with you. Some of you may or may not already know this and I know these are quite a lot of uh, new terms for a lot of people. Um, so HIV actually stands for human, because it affects humans, immunodeficiency and it attacks the immune system and virus. So when we talk about HIV that's the virus which people contract um, and which can, if left untreated, lead to AIDS. Now this one's a bit more to get your tongue around. Um, AIDS stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Um, so once again, acquired means you have to have HIV to then go on to have AIDS. Immune, once again, is your immune system. Deficiency, it attacks your immune system and depletes the cells in your immune system, making it weaker. And syndrome, it encompasses a wide range of different illnesses which you can pick up if you have HIV at quite a late stage. 
So what I just wanted to try and make quite clear um, is there's the difference between HIV is that HIV is the virus and AIDS is the syndrome which could develop if left untreated. However, in the UK, we're extremely lucky to have such a fantastic health system that a lot of people can be diagnosed with HIV, however, not ever contract AIDS. I'll now talk a little bit more about transmission um, and how HIV is actually contracted from one person to another. Um, for transmission to take place, you need these three key things. Um, you need a quantity of virus, so HIV needs to be present um, and it usually needs to be present at quite a high volume within the body. You also need a good quality of virus. Um, now, HIV is present in bodily fluids, um, but the quality of virus is only present within blood, semen, vaginal fluid, anal mucus and breast milk. Um, it is present in other fluids such as saliva, however quite a nice little disgusting fact for you, um, for HIV to be transmitted through saliva you'd actually need 8 litres, so that's not very likely to happen. Um, and then you'd also need a route for transmission as well, um, so it has to go from the HIV positive person directly to the bodily fluid of a negative person. So, for example, you couldn't catch HIV through your skin. The skin's a fantastic natural barrier against most bacteria and viruses, and HIV cannot get through the skin. Um, and also, we're talking about bodily fluids. Um, it can't be transmitted through saliva. As I've mentioned, you'd need a last large volume. So things like kissing, holding hands, sharing toothbrushes, using the same toilet would not have any risk of transmission of HIV. So even if exposure to the virus takes place, it's not certain that transmission will occur. Um, so the most highest risk of contracting HIV is still unprotected sex, intravenous drug use, uh, or mother to baby transmission. And I will just talk a little bit more about mother to baby transmission. In the UK, the risk of an HIV positive woman contracting HIV to their unborn child is less than half of a percent. Um, the transmission risk is actually during labour. So while the woman is pregnant, the placenta is a very, very strong barrier to the virus and to lots of other viruses as well. So therefore, as the baby is growing and developing with, within the mother, um, transmission will not occur. However, once the woman gives birth, um, it, there's a high risk of tearing and there's usually quite a bit of blood involved. So the risk of transmission at this point is the blood getting into the baby's mouth, nose and eyes. Um, however, in the UK, because of the treatment, this is still an exceptionally low, low risk of transmission to the point, as I said, the risk is actually less than half of a percent. So in other places in the world where they may not have access to treatment, the risk of mother to baby transmission would be around about 20%. So I want to talk to you about what HIV actually does to your body and the way I thought about doing this, this is a nice little diagram here, um, is to almost think of your body like a castle. So this here is your body and then if you could imagine your immune system is the soldiers putting up the defence on the line here. Um, so if HIV is not present, these soldiers quite happily keep the attacking forces at bay so they can defend the castle, defend your body and stop you from becoming unwell. I looked, a way to think of it is HIV almost sort of gets in the back door of the castle and slowly starts killing off um, the soldiers so it weakens your immune system. So if you can imagine half of these soldiers are not here, 
the attack and forces, so this would be things like viruses, bacteria, parasites, could then much easily, much easier, get into your body and attack your body. So with your immune system weakened, any bacteria, viruses or parasites, which would normally not cause a healthy person a problem, are then can cause illness in people who are living with HIV. Um, the immune system is not able to defend, its, defend the body and then you can become ill with some quite nasty infections. The most common ones um, associated with HIV in the late stages is usually certain types of cancers and pneumonia as well. So symptoms of HIV, um, some people when they think back to when they think they may have acquired HIV um, often say they felt quite fluey around that time, um, however not everyone reports this and obviously you know, people usually get coughs and colds a lot of the time. Um, so the very important thing with HIV is there may not be any symptoms for years and um, this could be 10 plus years, people could be living with HIV without knowing they have the virus. So they're perfectly healthy, the immune system is not, uh, not sufficiently damaged to cause a problem, so they just do not know how they have the virus until they become very unwell, and at this point they'd normally be diagnosed in hospital. As uh, so like I said, HIV continuously damages the immune system and that can be over a long period of time. Now some people have naturally very strong immune systems, so these are the people who, if they do not test for HIV, may not know they have the virus for many, many years. Other people may have a weaker immune system or the virus that they have may be a little bit more aggressive and they may become very unwell within just a couple of years. For this reason, we really encourage people to test for HIV as, as much as they can. We recommend that people go in for a routine screening about once every three months. So like I said, eventually people will start to suffer with what we know as opportunistic infections. So they're the ones that would not normally cause someone with a healthy immune system any problem. However, because HIV has damaged the immune system, these bacteria, viruses, etc. are starting to cause a problem. And these are the AIDS defining illnesses. So testing for HIV. Uh, when you have a test for HIV, that tells you whether the virus is in your body. Uh, the tests are available from GUM clinics, so sexual health clinics, um, and they're completely confidential. They don't even show, share the results with your doctor. And you can also talk to your GP as well, and they may do a test themselves or refer you to a sexual health clinic. Um, another route now is also go to the Territing Intertrust Fastest Centre. Unfortunately, we don't have one in Essex, but they do have a large team in Suffolk. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that, about that test in a minute. Um, so what happens next is HIV can take up to three months to show on a test. Because the tests are getting much better now, there's usually a shorter period of time. Um, but what all clinics will do is they'll recommend that you come back in three months after the risk of infection just to be sure that you definitely did not contract HIV. Um, and obviously if you're negative that doesn't mean that you're immune to HIV, it just means that transmission hasn't occurred at that time. So the fastest test, like I said, the closest one to us is Ipswich. Um, that's a simple prick on the finger, which I then drop a small amount of blood into a little dish. And you can get the results in 15 minutes. It can be much quicker with a lot of the newer tests as well. Um, and obviously, like I mentioned before, Terence Higgins Trust and some of our clinical services can test for chlamydia and gonorrhea as well. Now, 
Like I've mentioned, we encourage people to test as much as they can. We know for a fact that if someone's tested with HIV and they test positive, they're much more likely to look after their health, they're much more likely to access the correct services, they're also much more likely to get onto treatment at the correct time, and almost more importantly, they're much more likely to be more careful around their sexual health, um, and so to prevent from transmitting the virus further. Um, so we'll always tell people the benefits of testing is to have a peace of mind so if someone believes they may have been at risk of contracting HIV, you'll then put your mind at rest by knowing. And an early diagnosis has a better prognosis, which means that if you're um, diagnosed early, you'll then be in contact with the clinic, who will regularly monitor you. You'll also be put onto treatment at the right time. And also it's very, very unlikely that you would then go on to contract AIDS. Um, you could obviously plan for the future, access the correct services such as ourselves, but also the sexual health clinics. And you can inform partners or just prevent yourself from transmitting HIV further. So once HIV has been diagnosed, um, at the sexual health clinics, they'll then monitor your blood, so blood tests every three to six months. This way they can see the effect that the virus is having on your immune system and they can actually measure the cells that the virus attacks. So this will slowly go down and it's known as your CD4 count. Once your CD4 count gets to around about 350, you'll then be advised to start treatment. The treatment for HIV is known as highly active antiretroviral therapy, or HARP for short. Now with HIV medication there can be side effects. When treatment was first developed the side effects were really quite nasty. Um, people would have severe headaches, they'd have, suffer from fatigue and feel tired all the time. A lot of people would have nightmares and almost a kind of psychosis. There would also be vomiting, diarrhoea, and it really wasn't pleasant. However, thankfully treatment is progressing and becoming better and better, and at the same time, the side effects are getting much less and much more manageable. Most people report maybe headaches and a slight bit of an upset stomach and a bit of diarrhoea, but these will usually lessen after a couple of weeks to a month or two. Now the important thing about HIV treatment is it has to be taken at the same time every day and this is to stop resistance. Now HIV, the problem we're trying to find a cure or a vaccine against HIV is it's highly mutagenic. So this means the surface proteins on the virus change rapidly which is why there is not a cure or a vaccine as yet. So when you take your medication if you were to stop for a short period of time, um, the virus may mutate to something which is resistant to that medication. So even if you start taking that medication again, it will not, it will not work on the virus which is mutated. And then that will go on to replicate and start damaging your body again. Now there are lots of different types of medication, so if this does happen it's not the end of the world, however you do want to keep your treatment options as broad as you can for as long as possible. And as I mentioned some side effects are difficult to manage but they do tend to lessen in time. And the medication does not cure HIV. So what it does, it actually serves to reduce the amount of virus in your body to a point where it's known as undetectable. And when you're undetectable, the risk of transmitting the virus onto anyone else, even through unprotected sex, is very, very low risk. So this is why we really encourage people to test and to get onto treatment, as this will further reduce the risk of transmission. And obviously treatment only works if it's available. Um, we've, I always feel we're very, very lucky here in the UK to have such a fantastic health system. 
Unfortunately, this is not the case in a lot of countries around the world, especially in developing areas where they may not have access to any treatment at all. And just to give you some statistics about HIV here in the UK, now these are back from 2012, but it was estimated that 100,000 people were living with HIV here in the UK. And one of the most worrying statistics there is almost a quarter of these people would be unaware that they have the virus. This means that those quarter would be much more likely to pass the virus on to other people. And 50% of the new diagnoses were late diagnoses. So as I've mentioned, HIV was diagnosed late, usually at a time when the person was incredibly ill and most of the time in hospital with pneumonia or certain types of cancers associated with HIV. Um, I have seen a lot, a lot, a lot of people recover even at this point, however for some people it would then be too late. And one in five people accessing HIV care are over 50 and there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, with the treatment people are now living to almost normal life expectancies um, but there's also people that are being diagnosed over the age of 50 um, which may be positive in the fact that these people are actually going and getting tested and looking after their sexual health. There's just a couple of telephone numbers and a couple of um, websites as well for you to have a look at if you've got any questions. Um, our Colchester office number is listed on there and THT Direct is a free telephone number and they're able to give you advice on HIV and any other sexual health questions you may have. Uh, we've got our website, tht.org.uk, which really does have some fantastic fact pages in there. And then I've also put up My HIV, which is through Terence Higgins Trust, and also NAT, which is the National AIDS Trust. Um, so thank you very much. As I've mentioned, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to get hold of us. And also thank you very, very much for um, being involved and being part of the World AIDS Day Parks Festival 2014.